Welcome to the Mindset School Podcast. My name is Inga Pakalinishkita. I'm a life coach, neuroscience geek, and entrepreneur. In each week, I will bring you an inspiring topic, easy to use tools to help you become the best version of yourself so you can create the life that is beyond your wildest dreams. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Mindset School podcast. As we're bringing more and more business series on this podcast, today I'm really excited to bring you Maria Eilerson, who is a PR rock star, to talk about how to use PR to establish credibility and grow your business. If you've been looking for this secret weapon to take your business to another level, stay tuned and listen to this episode. This episode is really nitty gritty and very strategic. And also it will debunk all of the myths you've been holding about PR. Maria Eilerson is a true multi-passionate entrepreneur. She is a yoga teacher and she is the founder of Be Conscious PR. Be Conscious PR helps purpose-driven entrepreneurs get the recognition they deserve in the media. With a degree in journalism from NYU and a global experience in startup space, she has a lot to say. Stay tuned and enjoy the episode. Also, we now have a video experience available on the YouTube channel. Please click the link in the show notes and enjoy the video experience. Maria, thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, as the Mindset School podcast audience is growing and we have more and more uh, entrepreneurs in our audience, I wanted to invite you and to debunk some myths about PR and to talk about how to use PR to establish credibility and build business. Before we get into the episode, I wanted to ask you to introduce ourself, uh, yourself to uh, the audience. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm Maria. I am the founder of Be Conscious PR, and I am a PR coach and consultant for entrepreneurs who want to make a positive impact on the world um, and reach more people with their mission. So ultimately, they can make a bigger difference and, and really get the recognition that they deserve. Um, and I guess what sets me apart is that I have a conscious approach to communication because I believe not just from my experience, but also morally, ethically in coming from an authentic place and having integrity in your communication. And, and that's also ultimately just more effective. Mm, amazing. Um, I've been following your uh, Be Conscious PR uh, journey since you started and since you launched. And I really love uh, how you approach PR and uh, how you choose now to work with the businesses that are conscious and they, they want to um, share their values through PR. Um, can you talk to us a little bit uh, what strategic media coverage can do for a business? Yeah, sure. Um, I feel like I have so many things to say about what PR can do. Um, but I'll keep it, I'll keep it short. I'll keep it to mm -hmm. the, the key things. So I feel like there are two main things that PR can do for your business and media coverage. And number one is that getting press for your brand builds credibility and trust in your brand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have an example of you're going to buy a product and you have two of the same product in front of you, one you've never heard of, one you've seen featured in Cosmopolitan. On paper, they're exactly the same, same price, same quality. Which one are you gonna choose though? Most likely the one that you've seen featured in a, in a publication. And that's because um, consumers, they prefer media and personal recommendations 10 to one over traditional advertising. So there really is research behind it and just anecdotally as well, we all know that we, we see these, 
this media coverage as endorsement. So that's, that's kind of the key, the, key, the key thing that PR can do for you. Um, the second thing is that it helps you reach millions of people, right? If you go for the really big publications, they have millions and millions of readers and not just in one country, usually global. I mean, with the internet, you can read a US publication here, an Australian publication there. So ultimately, you get to reach way more people than you possibly could through your social media. And you can do that even if you're not a big name on social media, even if you don't have a lot of followers. So that's another big, powerful impact of media coverage. And then there's all these secondary things, right? So if you're mm -hmm. getting credibility, um, being featured in big publications, you know, you can start raising your prices because you're building trust. Um, you'll, you'll be able to translate that into sales. Um, you can build trust with investors and raise funding. Um, in digital publications, you'll drive traffic to your website, you build SEO. So there's so many things that PR can do for you, but the incredibility and reaching just tons and tons of people, those are the kind of two key things. Mm -hmm. And um, just recently, I've seen a post on your uh, Instagram where you uh, shared, or you prepared a, a report for your clients, how many uh, how many people she could reach. So can you share with us just a tiny bit what that number was? Yeah, um, I just compiled a monthly report for a client on Wednesday. And for the month of September, the total reach um, that, we, that we got with all this other media coverage that I secured for her was like 800 and something million, almost 900 million. And that's insane. Like that's an insane reach. She's a new startup. Um, and is not super well known. And now that many people have heard of her, which is, which is a really great result. Wow, that, that is amazing. When I've seen those numbers, I was, oh my goodness, this <laughs> is amazing. As a business owner, you really, you really want to have that because uh, for every business we need clients and uh, uh, everybody struggles with that. So if you get uh, that kind of reach, so you will, automatically attract uh, attention. And that attention leads into what you were saying earlier, into more sales, into more business. Mm -hmm. So that is really, really amazing. And uh, um, what are the biggest myths entrepreneurs have about PR? Uh, sure, there are a, quite a lot actually um, that I've, I've encountered. Um, so it's been kind of fun to be able to debunk all these myths to be like, no, that's not the case. Um, so I think a big one is that, you know, you have to pay a lot of money for it, that it's either really expensive or, you know, you have to actually pay journalists to write about you. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. So the number one thing I want to share is that PR, that, you know, actually getting press is free. Like it doesn't cost anything. The journalist does not charge you a, a cent <laughs> to, to feature you. Um, and ultimately that's why you kind of need to have this, the skills or to hire someone to do it because you want to find a way to pitch yourself to the journalist in a way that you're helping them do their job. You're giving them a story that they want to cover. Um, but it's, it's not expensive. The way that it can get expensive is based on the agency. Like, so if you're going to hire an agency, um, a lot of the really big name agencies charge a minimum of five, 10, 20, 30 K per month. And that's where it begins to be expensive, especially for early stage entrepreneurs. Um, and that's why I'm so passionate about teaching people how to do PR because it is, you know, yes, maybe you'll have to, you'll have to invest in learning the skill, but then it's free. So it's a very cost effective way to promote yourself as a business. Mm. So that's why I'm like very passionate about like, no, this, this is a myth. It does. It's not expensive. You don't have to pay any money to advertise in order to get that press coverage. Um, so that's one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And another one um, that came up recently, actually, on a client call was um, the idea that journalists will prefer to work with a PR person, like a PR agency or a PR consultant. Um, and actually, journalists love when they can get direct contact to the source. So mm -hmm. a lot of the time, you know, you have the benefit of having a PR person do it for you is, you know, you save time and they arrange your schedule and they kind of take care of the admin. But from the journalist's point of view, like they find it annoying to go through a PR person. So they, they will because they have to most of the time. But if they can go straight to you and mm. you pitch them directly, they're going to love you for that. So mm. that's definitely not a reason to not, you know, try to put yourself out there because it's actually going to work in your favor because there aren't that many people who do their own PR. 
Um, so that's, that's a second That's one. a really good one. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a big one. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, there, there are quite a few. I think another one is that um, people think that press comes to you. So like, if you're successful enough, mm -hmm. you know, then, then journalists are going to find you. And the thing is like, you know, yeah, maybe if you're already kind of well known, maybe they'll, maybe they'll notice you, but mm -hmm. having that passive approach is, is, is usually not going to work. And a lot of the time, the difference between your competitors who are being featured in the media and you is that they are proactively reaching out to journalists all the time going, Hey, what about this? I've got this idea for this story. And Hey, we're doing this and constantly being top of mind um, and pitching themselves. So there are cases, yes, when people come to you, but you really want to be proactive. Um, and like I said, the only difference is that they are taking that proactive approach, um, which kind of leads into another myth, which is that, Oh, I'm not, I'm who am I? I'm a small business person or like not a small business person, but like, I'm a new entrepreneur. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't been in the business for a long time or I don't have any big, big, you know, awards or I don't have a huge funding behind me. So who am I to be pitching myself? Like I'm not enough of an expert. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth is that you're, you are an expert because you're an expert on your experience. So whatever you have experience in, what you've helped your clients with, uh, the industry that you've been working in, you are an expert on that. Like you can speak to that. You can provide your perspective. And that's like a really big one that comes up with my clients that, yeah, like if you have experience in something, you have something to say. Mm -hmm. um, and journalists are always looking for people who can comment on many different things. And sometimes it's even like a human interest story and it's not even, it's not even about your industry or your business. It's like, I don't know, I saw a request this morning that was like, we want to know about, you know, the best working from home outfits. Anyone could talk about that. We've all been working from home. So we are all <laughs> experts on what we're comfortable working from home in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's another really big myth. Um, of course, you know, you want to be mindful of the things that you talk about and not say you're an expert on everything, mm -hmm. but you're on, you know, more than you think. I think that's one thing that comes up for my clients. Mm. That's really good. I, feel, I think uh, this is what I've learned from you when we did our, our pre-call. Because um, Marie and I, we know each other from our personal inner circle. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and I, I know how she's working and I know what value she provides to her clients. So uh, as I wanted to bring in more um to share business series here on the Mindset School podcast, uh, you you were just like a light bulb came to my mind when I visited you in your house, and I wanted to bring you here. Um, and uh, can you tell us a little bit when is the right time to start PR? Because I think as uh, newly started entrepreneurs, you're kind of, you're still building up your, your own confidence in sharing things and putting yourself out there. Uh, can you tell us when would be the right time to start PR? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a, that's a really good question. Um, that's also something that comes on, on my kind of pre client calls or, or initial strategy calls, um, to kind of really get clear on is PR the right, the right move for you right now? Um, I mean, I'm probably biased, but I would say that mm -hmm. there's always an opportunity for PR for most businesses. Um, it's, I think for me, in my point of view, it's a matter of when is it not appropriate to do PR. Mm -hmm. And from my point of view, it's, it's really only if you're so early in your entrepreneurial journey that you're still kind of figuring out what your services are, how you're positioning yourself as a brand, what you're an expert on, like if, if all of that is kind of still unclear, you want to maybe hold off from pulling the trigger with PR because I, would, I like to say that there's no such thing as, you know, there's, you don't get a second chance at a first impression, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can, you know, companies do rebrand all the time, so it can be done, mm -hmm. but it's much easier to go out with, you know, a key, posi key positioning and key messages that are intentional rather than beginning to talk to the media and saying kind of maybe um, conflicting things and then trying to change that reputation once it's out there. 
It's much mm. better to take that step back and be like, okay, what do I want to be known for? What am I an expert on? What are the key things I want to talk about in the media? What are my key messages? What messages do I want to get out there? Um, what do I want to be the voice of? And how do I want my people to talk about my services and talk about me? So that's what I work with my clients on ultimately. And, and it's in that process that we also kind of get quite clear on, you know, maybe a lot of things that you hadn't thought about. So that's why I think even exploring PR, even if you end up not necessarily going down that route just yet, beginning yeah. to think about that, to be like, okay, if I were to talk to a journalist, how would I want them to write about me? And then even just doing that exercise as a way to get really clear on your business positioning and, you know, getting some clarity on your branding. And then you can decide based on, you know, how clear you are, if you want to pursue it, or if you want to kind of still finesse that behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that kind of already, uh, your answer led into my next question was, what are the essentials of PR? And, and how can you start securing press for your brand in a way that feels aligned with your business value? So I think we covered what the essentials are. So mm -hmm. if, you could, if you could um, share with us a little bit more, um, how can you start securing that press that aligns with your business values? Yeah, of course. Um, it's a great question. Um, so I want to make it simple. I feel like I have so many things to say about this. There are so many things um, that you can do, but I start by taking that step back and really starting with your why. So why are, you know, why are you in business? what are your business goals? Why are you putting yourself out there? And why are you pursuing PR? What are your PR objectives? So you want your PR objectives to align with your business goals. So an example of that is, you know, let's say you're a new startup and you're going for funding, right? So your business objective is securing funding. Then your PR objective is impressing investors and getting investor buy-in. So mm -hmm. if that's the case, you're going to be wanting to get into Forbes, into Inc., into Quartz, into business sections of newspapers, Financial Times. You want to be getting into all these media publications that investors read so that they start being like, okay, they're being endorsed in the media. They must know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, if you're a yoga teacher and your objective is to get more yoga students, Forbes might not be the place, you know? And you might be going for lifestyle magazines or lifestyle newspaper sections talking about the benefits of yoga on, you know, mm -hmm. when you're working from home and all the desk, <laughs> the desk issues, the desk <laughs> tightness that we get in our hips and stuff like that. You know, so that's going to be a completely different strategy than for someone who's looking for funding. And that's what I think is so amazing about PR is that it can serve so many different functions, right? Like in a political election, PR is key, right? It's about getting the candidates key um, issues out there and getting people to buy in and vote for them. So PR can do so many different things. So that's why I think I'd always recommend starting with why before you do any kind of outreach. Um, and then the second piece to that is based on your why, based on your objectives, what are your key messages? So what is it you want to be known for? What are the things you want to get out there? You know, if you're wanting to generate sales, you want to be talking about why, why your product is unique and how it's different from your competitors. Um, if you're talking about, if you're a yoga teacher, you want to talk about the benefits of PR, the impact on mental health, like whatever that is, you really want to think about these key messages. And then you want to have proof points. And that's a big thing, um, especially if you want to do PR in a way that feels good, which I'm really passionate about because mm -hmm. I think PR can kind of get a bit of a bad rap sometimes, like for being this, this thing that puts a positive spin on bad news or, you know, it's a way to make things that are, are bad seem, seem better than they are or to kind of like manipulate the public. But I think it's such a valuable tool, tool to really contribute meaningfully to the media narrative because we can use this tool to get certain stories into the media. Um, and that's why I always ask my clients to come up with proof points. So mm -hmm. for every key message, you have examples of why that's the case. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a yoga teacher and you're all about beginner friendly yoga and about making it accessible, okay, proof point, all of my classes, I offer modifications that are suitable to beginners. Um, 
I'm really passionate about um, body positivity and showing that yoga can be practiced despite what your body shape is and your fitness ability or whatever that may be. But you have like concrete things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one, because when you're talking to a journalist, a lot of the time they like to challenge you to be like, oh, you're like, oh, we're the best on the market. And they're like, why? Like, mm -hmm. tell me more. Um, so that's one reason. But the other reason is also because it just feels better. Like if you're talking about something that's true, it's, it's just easy and natural and feels good. And it's going to come across that way as well. It's going to come across really authentically. So that's why those proof points are really, really important. Mm -hmm what we're talking about in my head now i'm just like the the ideas are popping what how i can use this for my business and i and i am confident that the listeners will feel the same way and uh, now let's jump into the the mind blocks that your clients experience so when and I think we touched a little bit on some of the aspects that, uh, well, who am I? I'm not a, a big enough expert. Why should I be featured in, in press? So mm -hmm. can you share with us what are the most uh, common mind blocks your clients would, would have when they first um, start working with you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been surprising to see what comes up or maybe, it, maybe, it's, maybe it's not so surprising. Um, but a big one is like you mentioned, this fear of not being good enough or, or a feeling of not being good enough or imposter syndrome. And maybe that's because I work with a lot of women and imposter syndrome tends to affect us much more. Um, there's actually studies that show it's because it's just an impact, like it's just a natural reaction to living in a patriarchy that we doubt our abilities. Um, mm -hmm. So that's actually, I think that's, that's one thing that maybe one of my key messages that I want to get out there that, mm -hmm. you know, this feeling of imposter syndrome is, is so common and it's normal and it's natural and feeling like an imposter does not mean that you are. And mm -hmm. that's why I, I have that conversation around, look, you have ex experience in this, 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 look at all this stuff that you've done. You can talk about all of that. You don't need to doubt yourself. Um, so that's, that's one really big one. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it happened to me. I, I've started PRing myself for the first time. I've always been able to hide behind my clients, you know, and, and it <laughs> yeah. was just their names and their face in the media. And I was just behind the scenes being like, okay, yeah, I made that happen, but my face is nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and when I've started pitching myself being like, oh, wait, am I, do I actually know what I'm talking about? And then I have to remind myself that no, you, you landed press in New York times. You have this client, you've done this. And it's like, it's, it's, you know, our mind is just, that's why this podcast, I also think it's so fascinating because our minds are fascinating, the tricks that they play on us. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a big one. Um, and then another big one is the fear of being seen, which I think ties mm -hmm. in with this feeling of not being enough that ultimately, you know, publicity doesn't really, it, publicity is neutral, right? Publicity is attention on you. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's going to, it's going to, you know, put the spotlight on you and everything. And yeah, you know, you're going to present certain things to the media, but that's why I always promote coming from a place of integrity and authenticity, because if you are honest, there's nothing that's going to come out. That's like, Oh, oops, I was trying to hide that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, and that really helps also with the fear of being seen because you're owning up fully to everything. Um, and you know, that's why sometimes it comes up when I talk to talk to my my clients about something that they're like, oh, I'm not really very confident on this issue. And it's like, okay, well, let's role play it. Let's talk about how you would respond to a question like that because it's okay to not know everything. Like, yeah. People who are interviewed don't know everything. That's okay. And you can tell a journalist that they're, you know, at the end of the day, they're human as well. Um, so that's why, yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope to help with that. Um, but the fear of being seen can be a big block and kind of manifest in the way of perfectionism or procrastination, which I think is very relatable to a lot of people. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that's a big one, but it's just remembering that it's something that we all experience. So like, mm -hmm. let's normalize it, you know? Um, and I think it's so important to hear it from you. Uh, you are a true rock star of PR. 
Oh, there you. are actually <laughs> articles talking about this, uh, about you. And it's so important to hear from an expert who, who landed the press for her clients in New York Times and, uh, uh, and all of those other places. Uh, and, you know, for anyone who is listening, it's so important to know that everybody goes through this phase of feeling that like they don't know enough that they're mm -hmm. not experts enough that they feel they have an imposter syndrome this is like you know a massive thing that i'm working with my clients when you know i help them to set up their businesses or I help them to work on their life so they can you know feel much more fulfilled and just reach their potential so thank you so much for sharing that and being open sharing your own personal experience putting yourself out there and that you still had to go through all of this even though you're mm -hmm. an expert and that just you know shows that uh, our minds are doing that to all of us and we're not alone in this <laughs> yeah no i'm happy to share i'm like anyone who follows me on instagram will know i'm pretty i'm a pretty open book Mm. Um, and I think I, it's like, I need to practice what I preach. Right. So yeah. I'm out there with you <laughs> facing <laughs> the fear of being seen and, and reminding myself that I do know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. so yeah. yeah, that's really amazing. So Maria, can you share with us what's next for you? What are you working towards today? So whether that would be in your business or in your personal life? Sure. Um, I mean, at the moment, I, I focus on coaching clients, so teaching people how to do their own PR, because for all the reasons we've talked about, yeah. it's such a cost effective skill. And um, so that that's my main focus. And then I also um, consult kind of selectively with a few clients that I really, really believe in who want someone to do their PR for them. Um, but I think a natural next step, I think, in the near future is to build a course. So I know that um, one, I mean, one-to-one -one coaching, I'm a really big fan of it. I've had business coaches and I really like the one-to-one -one format, but I know I can reach a lot more people mm -hmm. and make the skill a lot more accessible if I were to create kind of a packaged course that's a video course that you do on your own time. So that's probably something that will happen. And I think saying it now is also going to hold me accountable yes. <laughs> to put it out there um, yeah. because I have had some interest in that. Um, and who knows, maybe, maybe a podcast, maybe if, if this is something that people really want to hear more about, I have so much to say about it. <laughs> mm. So, um, for now it's all on Instagram, but, um, maybe that's something in the near future. Um, so that's all on a business level. And personally, I have very big news, which is that I'm moving to Portugal. I'm leaving London, which is huge, <laughs> huge news. Yeah. Um, and I'm a third culture kid. So I've moved around my whole life and I've been living here for the past six years, which is the longest I've lived anywhere consecutively, like in, you know, without mm -hmm. moving back. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal, but also I'm kind of impressed that I lasted this long. Um, so yeah, moving to Lisbon to be by the sea, which is very exciting as, as now it's gotten darker and it's raining and it's cold and gray. Yeah. Like, okay, I today, think I think especially <laughs> today yeah. is the typical uh, autumn winter day in London where it's just like all you want to do is just uh, curl up in your couch and just not even <laughs> step outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is really amazing. I'm super excited for your move to Lisbon. I'm excited, but I'm also sad because uh, you and Raquel are my friends and in my, in my uh, close circle of people that I enjoy hanging out with. So um, I'm just going to have to come visit. Basically. Yes. A hundred percent. That's what we're telling everyone. It's like, Hey, it's not so bad. It just means that you have an excuse to come to Lisbon all yes. the time. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm focusing on. That's, you yeah. know, that's where I'm like kind of healing my sadness. And uh, if any of our listeners would like to connect with you, where mm -hmm. can they do that? Yeah, they can connect with me on Instagram. So be conscious PR, B E C O N S C I O U S P R. And I'm also www.beconsciouspr.com. So that's a same thing across all of social media channels, also on Facebook. Um, and I do offer free strategy calls to anyone who's interested in exploring PR. 
So, you know, if that's something you're thinking about, you're curious about it, I'd love to chat just to see if it's even the right thing for you. Um, and yeah, that's it. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from your listeners. Amazing. I think you'll have somebody reaching out because I think what we covered today is, is really, really valuable and the work that you do and the expertise that you bring in is, um, is is really really good so maria thank you so much for joining me in today's episode for sharing your expertise and for being here with me and i am thanking you for your time and my pleasure, it's a pleasure i will to be speak here. to you <laughs> soon all right take care if you loved this episode please subscribe leave a review and share it with your friends. If you are a social creature, take a screenshot of this podcast, include one insight you learned from this episode and tag me at Inga Pakal. I cannot wait to see your insights. Also, you might want to check out my free audio guide, How to Get Unstuck, which also includes a workbook. You'll learn three simple strategies to generate clarity, regain direction, and feel energized. Simply visit ingapakelnishkite.com or click the link in the show notes. Once again, thank you so much for listening and I'll speak to you next week. Bye now.